Hello, everybody. We are here talking with Shane, um, who runs the Facebook group JWs for Justice, and who has been covering the New Zealand Commission and the investigation and stuff. Did I get all that right? <laughs> well, it's yeah, it is a Facebook page, not a group where we just put things up. Okay. Um, and there's a couple of people who look after it. It's not just myself. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me, Shane. I really appreciate it. No problems so, at all. I was going to let you just explain. Um, I know all of us in other countries don't quite understand everything that's been going on in New Zealand. Most of us know that there was just an investigation and the commission, which, you know, I believe that all that is done. And now the commission has come forward and you sent me a picture and we'll put the picture up of the report that was given to the government. Yep, they sure did. That came out. Um, actually, the report got handed over a day before. So it was planned to be on the 26th and the government in their wisdom decided they were, well, no, sorry, the commission decided that they would hand it over on the 25th, which sort of backfired on a, it wasn't really a protest, but they had something planned for the 26th. And yeah, while one of the um, MPs from the parliament came forward, there was only 20 odd, maybe even less than that, um, who went to that supposedly the day of the passing over to the government, which didn't sort of go to plan for them. But uh, it still got handed over. So the picture I sent you has all the reports in it. And um, when I've shared that picture of everybody, I've said, guess which one is the Jehovah's Witness case study? The largest one? No. No? No. It's one at the very end, and it's a pile of paper. It has not been hmm. at the time printed. Interesting. So, um, yeah, the whole thing has been a little bit up and down. Um, people including myself there's sometimes i've made mistakes even just recently i didn't quite get it um i got it clarified the the royal commission while it has investigated was not going to investigate any of the faith-based institutions and back in around 2007 to uh, sorry it's 2017 2018 um, they did announce that they were going to be investigating and there was a little bit of backlash, if it's the right word, where they said they would do the state with a little bit of um, lobbying from a number of different areas, including XJ dubs from around the world. Um, I wasn't involved at that time. I came into it after it was announced that Faith Base was going to be included. So while I was out of the J-dubs, I knew nothing was really going on. It wasn't until 2017 I knew about the Australian Royal Commission. So I missed yeah. a whole lot. And one of the things that woke me up um, was the fact that they protected pedophiles. And I go, no, they don't. And that's where it all started for myself. When I did a little bit yeah. of research, I discovered, oh, crap, they do. Um, cause I'd never as an elder ever handled any child abuse case. And in fact, the congregation I was in and what really shocked me at the time, um, there was a pedophile in the congregation and oh, I really, went, yeah. And the trouble was he liked boys and I had allowed my son to go and stay with him and I went, Oh, oh no. So he, um, I had to, because him and me are not talking, we were sort of talking, I had to ask him a question in a roundabout way because, yeah, how do you bring it up? 
So anyway, I brought it up and he said, no, Dad, I, nobody's ever done anything to me, which was a relief because that particular guy, I soon learnt, was part of a ring. There was an, oh, an accountant. No. There was himself. There was another J-Dub. And there's one guy who lives not too far from where I am that um, was part of it. Anyway, that particular alleged pedophile or person, or whatever you want to call him, is now dead. Um, the victim who was instrumental in getting a, a confession, we just about got that on the media, but for some reason it never happened. I still have the recordings of him confessing. Um, I still have the written note that he wrote and um, with those little things that happened with that particular person, he was able to start moving on and he started to do things in his life. So that was right early on. And then I discovered it was in my own family. And I went, oh, no. what? Where did, how did, and it just, I couldn't believe it. It, it was all true. And Shocking. And then I discovered it was carried on within that particular family member, which I don't really call him family. And the only time I ever want to speak to him is when he's in the police station. That yeah. person lives in Australia. And unfortunately, the more and more I hear about it, and it's no laughing matter, um, he has done a number of unfortunate people who now have to cope with that for the rest of their life. And all those things, I went, you've got to be kidding. And those was at the start. And that's when I started getting involved in a network, which has helped us to be able to get in and talk with the lawyers and other individuals where we could speak and educate some of New Zealand as to the J Dub's mentality and attitudes, and yeah. now they've—I know it's jumping around a little bit—but the Royal Commission has really pushed the fact that the Jehovah's Witnesses are not helpful. <laughs> they have an attitude that yeah. stinks, and that the poor victims. Well, they are totally against the Jehovah's Witnesses for them according to the Royal Commission, holding up the release of the final report. So yeah. while it's bad news, the good news is mud does stick and people are very well aware that the Jehovah's Witness leadership don't care. They care about their money yeah. and their name and that's it. But yeah, exactly. back in 2017, 2018, I knew nothing about what I now know. Um, yeah. I never thought that was possible. So anyway. Yeah, so we had a little bit so, of chat early on. So with the, um, I can't remember who it was that rang me. I was on a job and the lady would have had to have listened to me clean her leather lounge suite. And um, I got the lounge suite done, but it was like, 45 minutes later than it should have been. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm yeah. never afraid to tell. We were always encouraged to tell the truth. So I'm telling the truth. And we educate where we can and whatever we can do to get in the media, which in recent times has been successful, thanks to a number of reporters, Anusha Bradley is one of them. She's done a great job and she continues to work at getting things in the media. So yeah, that's yeah. A, a brief summary, so. Well, it sounds like you guys have been working hard and we appreciate everything you're doing because I know New Zealand is just a small island compared to you know many other countries. But I think this is good because it shows that it's everywhere, everywhere. Sure this, is. Them hiding the CSA and 
the horrific things they have been doing in hiding. And I was really happy when New Zealand, I heard New Zealand was going to be doing an investigation and the commission. And uh, I was very happy also to hear that Watchtower, that they were going to be investigating religious organization. And then, of course, we know Watchtower filed the suit that they didn't think they should be part of it, but surprise. Surprise, yeah. So the J-dubs, they had put the handbrakes on at every moment they can, like they do in every other court case. So back in um, when I was working with a guy called Phil Pennington, and the first time we had contact with the um, radio through Radio New Zealand was, and you may remember the announcement, where they were encouraged to destroy their personal notes and the other yes. bits and pieces. So we got that into the um, the media. And when I had a conversation with Phil, he goes, so what have you been doing? And at the time, once again, I was on a job, I couldn't think what had actually happened. And I rang him back and said, well, we did actually send this particular letter to the Royal Commission, letting them know that this was what Jehovah's Witnesses were encouraged to do, especially if they were elders in documents and so he goes well what did they say i said i don't know i sent it to them so he contacted and that's when we started getting into the media and it was 2019 that it happened and it wasn't until the judicial review that i understood the j dubs were hoodwinking if that's the right word the royal commission Right at the very start, Terence O'Brien said, you need to contact Christian Congregation Jehovah's Witnesses Australasia. And when I first read the document, I'm going, no child abuse? Because that's what he claimed. Well, that's what they claimed. And technically, they're right. They have no records of child abuse because they weren't in existence. And one thing I've learned, they ones like the lawyers don't understand the Jehovah's Witnesses or other high control groups that have to deal with this. They would hoodwink, they would hide, they would distract, they would divert, not to give a clear picture of what is actually happening. Yeah. And so right, right back then, we warned them, it wasn't just myself and um, XJ Dubs, the network that we were part of and other XJ dubs that were glad that they were going to be investigated wrote and said, this is what the J dubs will do. They did not believe the J dubs would be like what we know them to be. And so yeah. it, it <laughs> yeah, I, I call them the seven headed snake because every which way they go, they just are slippery as a snake and very deceptive. I know that might be picking on snakes because snakes are quite nice. Um, unless they bite you. But they but but the um Royal Commission with their logic and their attitudes and things like that. So it just made me realise what I was a part of and the publications that you can see behind me we know what they are i started to collect them because if the royal commission needed anything i have physical printed copies that i can go and get a verified copy from the court and send it to them yeah and obviously my collection got a little bit bigger um, than what i had originally planned but yeah it, it was helpful um we can get photos we can get information we can send it to them along with all the other things that have been um put out there with regards to procedures and letters and things like that so yeah it's yeah. been an interesting time but in more recent times when it did start in say 2022 so the watchtower was mucking around all that time and there was very little happening because of COVID. We had lockdowns. They did do Zoom sorts of things, um, occasionally with private hearings. I know when I went, I went in person. Um, 
they actually came to my town and took my statement and then they came back for another statement as from a, an elder's perspective. Um, but it's interesting how the Commission has actually done the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jehovah's Witnesses have not been investigated in a public hearing. They've mm. never been... They need to be. Well, they need to be. They have given, yeah. according to the latest Pānui, which is a newsletter, they have a case study. What's in that case study? We don't know. But Watchtower early on did get a draft copy of what they were going to talk about, the J-Dubs. And while it came out on the 25th, Watchtower, and I don't know why they feel they are so special, even the victims don't get to see, regardless of whether it's a state or a faith-based, the report. And yet Watchtower, in their wisdom, which is not that great, um, wanted to find out what was in the report. They wanted all the documents that went along with that report, and they were turned down. Because yeah, I noticed that I one of your that. recent, yeah, one of the recent um, videos you said free zip. Well, they lost the judicial review back last year. Um, they they lost the appeal. And then they've lost this case. Now, in that's the application they filed on the... I'm oh, losing track of my days now, but the last one. And when I spoke with Simon, who's the lead lawyer, um, I asked him to clarify a couple of things for me, and he did. The J-Dubs at the same time is trying to get a copy of the final report also filed a judicial review. And the lawyer goes, this is strange because there's no report out yet. Yeah. And, and I'm just going, well, that's what they do. Yeah. Now, question, is yep. this final report going to be available to everybody? Like, is it going to be made public? Yes, it is. Um, it, it, can, it gets tabled in Parliament on the 24th of this month. Okay. Now, we may not get it straight away, but it will be available um, on the website. Well, a website and we will be able to get hold of it. There is going to be 16 volumes and the J-Dubs have a case study. So while they might be in parts of other volumes, they will have their standalone case study, which will have everything in there from what the Royal Commission has found. Okay. As to what Good. it is, we have to wait. Now, yeah, there's very little we, we can actually know. do. Yeah, we just don't know. Um, there's very little we can actually do because um, people don't really understand what's been happening with regards to our Royal Commission. Um, there's, I'm just trying to think of a polite way of putting it. <laughs> there <laughs> are things that, oh, okay, we'll use the word shortcomings. And some are small and some are major. And it's not just with regards to the Jehovah's Witnesses, it's regards to all faith-based. Yeah. They, they included it under pressure. So they did it. What they should have done is done a standalone one for faith-based. Yeah. They didn't actually need to do an investigation to know how bad the problem was they already knew how bad the problem was in abuse. So they have wasted many hundreds of millions of dollars to be able to do a investigation into faith-based state institutions. The final figure, 
it may be well above what Australia paid for their Royal Commission. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And it's not know. even as large as uh -uh. Australia was. No. So wow. the problem, you know, there has been a number of problems and the commission has kept asking for money. They were turned down. It was then decided that the commission would be put under statutory management and that the terms of reference would go back to the original 1950 to 1999. Now, every faith-based organization that I know had many, many cases after the year 2000. As regards to yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses, people did come forward. They did write their submissions and their stories and their testimony. But taking it back, there was only one of all those documents handed to them from the JW size that was within scope. So That's that brings, disappointing. Well, it is disappointing. There's a good side to it. Why are the Jehovah's Witnesses so scared if it's only one case? Yeah. Makes you wonder. It does make you wonder. Um, so oh. there's an inkling as regards to what may be in the report. They know how the Jehovah's Witnesses act. Yeah. They know in the courtroom or in the lawyers, in their interactions with the commission what the jehovah's witnesses are like yeah so we'll have to wait to see the final report but if the jehovah's witnesses are so scared because that appears to be the case what is in there that they're so scared about even the judge in the review was it the review yeah i think it was the review um they said what are you so scared about? Yeah. We should be able to ask questions and investigate. Wouldn't you want that to clear your name? Those are my words, but it was the same sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's, you sit there, you got to shake your head and wonder. Yeah, that's all I can say on that. Yeah, it makes you wonder. And, you know, when I was talking about the appeal that they had just lost and wanting an advanced copy to, you know, read before it's made public, I even mentioned that, you know, they obviously are scared of something and want to go into damage control before it's yeah. even available for the public. And I think that's what that whole court case was about them trying to get um, the report before everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, fortunately, they won't get it. Nobody's going to get it until it's been tabled, apart from those ones who need it, um, on the 24th of this month. Once it's been tabled in Parliament, we will be able to get it. We'll be able to find out what is in that report. Yeah. It would be nice for them to release that early, like they have other things <laughs> i wouldn't hold my breath to be honest um yeah. just with different things we've seen happening with the commission while they've done some good work um there's a lot of questions there's been a lot of promises given and told that we would be able to you know, as a network, not just the J-dubs, because I fast learned that while the J-dubs are bad, um, there's so many other religions out there, faith-based organisations that just are as bad as the J-dubs, if not worse. Yeah. You know, like the Exclusive Brethren. Um, I know they've changed the name slightly. Um, they're worse than the Jehovah's Witnesses in a lot of ways. Jehovah's Witnesses are worse in other ways, but they're, they're just as bad. 
And it wasn't yeah. until I realized, working with the network and some of the survivors, they're all the same. And it just, you know, I'll give you an example. I've been speaking with a, yeah, an ex-Scientologist. We know what Scientology is like. Yeah. And when that latest report came out from Anusha Bradley, she goes, are the J-dubs in bed with Scientology? I said, well, they could be. There is an individual that works for both of them. And she goes, they are becoming like Scientology in the way they handle legal matters. And she could yeah. not believe that that was what the J-dubs were turning into. Yeah, we've been in contact with several ex-Mormons and current Mormons, and the LDS church has the same problem, yeah. and they do the same thing. They have been hiding it mm -hmm. for decades, yeah. and it it's all getting exposed. Um, I just got a notice this morning that the Gateway Church, which is one of those new mega churches. Uh, here in the United States, um, I think they're based in Texas. Same thing. They just got exposed. The guy that started that mega church has all these accusations of abuse against him with the CSA. And the Seventh-day Adventists, the Baptists, the Southern Baptists, it's all of them. Yeah. It's all of them. They're all being exposed. So, and of course, we all know the Catholic Church. One thing I noticed with regards to ones from different religions, um, what you've just said is correct. They all got the same problem. But yeah. like like X J Dubs, we think J Dubs are worse. Um, the Catholic Church, the members who here in New Zealand that I've spoken to, they think their organisations worse. It doesn't matter; they all do it. They are all just yeah. as bad as each other, and they need to be held accountable. Exactly. Exactly. And they all need to be investigated, and those that hide it. And my personal opinion is there should be no clergy pen and privilege that it remains confidential and secret. I think all of the clergy should be required everywhere worldwide to mandatory report cases, allegations of CSA. Totally agree. What gives them yeah. the right to give a young person a prison sentence for the rest of their life? Exactly. Exactly. And it ruins people's lives. Yeah, it does. You know, like we talked about before with regards to the J-dubs, and this is how a lot of religious people are viewing it now, the J-dubs held up the final report so many different times they a large number of them they feel that the report was never going to come out before they died it, it should have been out the report should have been out a year ago but it kept getting extended and then extended yeah and then extended like the, with regards to the Jehovah's Witnesses and their appeals and the judicial reviews the commission was trying to um, cope with all this going on and the government allowed the extensions because of some of the goings behind goings on behind the scenes yeah it was almost like the Jehovah's Witnesses were filing all of these court mm -hmm. cases and lawsuits and stuff just to delay all of this. Yeah, it was like the tail wagging the dog. Yeah. J-dubs, I think they must be special or something, but it's not just about the J-dubs, even though they are bad in some of the things that they do. Well, a lot of things they do. Well, as an elder, you know that they feel that the world is Satan's organization and they don't have to answer to Satan's organization. That's right. So basically above the law. Yeah. And every other religion is doing the same thing. 
So and as to what's going to happen from now on, um, a lot of things that have happened over the last few years is being held up by per certain individuals' own viewpoints on faith-based. Ones who are in charge don't really want to do it. They did things to hold things up. Um, that's the reports I've been getting. Yeah. And you just wonder, if, why couldn't you have done a proper job? Well, it, for a start, it was too wide. Our yeah. Royal Commission not only was focusing on child abuse, but it was focusing on any sort of abuse, whether it was an emotional, whether it was physical, mental, sexual. And Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. along with many other high control groups and not so high control groups, fall in that category. So the scope was so wide that they honestly could not cover it in such a short space of time. And for a population of 5 million here in New Zealand, or whatever the figure is at the moment, um, just too wide, too much information. They probably weren't expecting it, all of this and we're a bit overwhelmed yep definitely because i know when i sat down to talk to one of the investigators he was surprised at how much j dub stuff was coming forward they never expected um i couldn't get figures from them i said i don't need to know how many uh, the names or anything but it would be nice to know how many j dubs were coming forward we still don't know the actual figure but even as of that article that came out in radio new zealand i had a woman reach out to me she tracked me down and she was abused and she wants to do a few things yeah. Um, it was nice to meet her, but she has a real disliking for JW Elders because of what she went through. Um, it's just so sad that these organizations feel they're above the law, like you said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it just. Oh. You don't know what to think about it, considering you were t always taught as you grew up as a J-Dub, there's not a problem with child abuse, not a problem with any other abuse, whether it's a human right one or a normal one. And then to find yeah. out that that's what happens. And of course, we're lying because we don't know. We're apostates and they don't yeah. like that sort of information coming out. Well, that's why Watchtower Jehovah's Witnesses have to demonize all of us as yep. liars and all of this because they don't, Watchtower does not want the JW members to find out that, hey, there is a serious systemic problem and we are telling the truth. And, you know, I wanted to mention, you mentioned, you know, how most don't know the problem in their congregations and i knew as a child that there were several problems in our congregation because i am an abuse survivor of physical abuse you know my dad would beat me and so you know us kids would talk in the meetings and several of my friends and stuff were being abused you know like you mentioned if it wasn't sexually it was physically and you know psychologically yeah. and it's just horrific when you start thinking about how prolific this problem is and yeah. we only know jehovah's witnesses but imagine all these other organizations what a horrible problem it must be yeah well uh, it wasn't until i woke up that i realized like yourself I had the physical, we've all had the emotional and the manipulation. It's all abusive behavior, 
but sometimes our yep. parents didn't know what we know now. Um, it's a total different environment that we all live in. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I couldn't believe what I found out about my own father. I know what people thought of him, and I know what I saw in the house, but I thought it was normal. Yeah, we all did. Yeah, it's just, and you go, oh, it's not normal. Well, that's not good. Yeah. But yeah, it it's certainly been an eye opener when it comes to working like last year as a network, a network of survivors. So it's not just the J Dubs. Um, it's all faith based. Uh, we went to the UN by Zoom. We didn't go to Geneva or anything, but we went to a meeting and I'm sitting there going, Do you guys don't get it? No, they don't get the abuse. And we're talking about every faith base that is part of the network. They just don't get it how abusive these religious organizations are to the individuals. And I don't know about other countries, but here in the United States, um, the First Amendment of the Constitution gives people, everyone, the freedom to religion. Well, Watchtower uses that over and over. I've read so many court documents where they throw that in. Basically, we can do what we want under the name of religion. Yep. And our doctrines, we can change whenever we want. And, like, there again, they think they're above the law. But, see, a lot, we have talked to a lot of um, government officials and they, for the most part, don't want to even get involved with investigating religions because they don't want to step on their toes and violate the freedom of religion. Because Watchtower will run to the United Nations crying foul. They will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just makes you wonder. But I think yeah. people as a whole... Uh, like I know here in New Zealand, one of the best things that have come out by the J-Dubs doing what they've done, it's made people aware of what the J-Dubs are like. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's one good thing all of this has done is when we get these final reports, when we get these court documents, and we can actually see in writing and in the hearings, the videos of the hearings like the ARC, we can see they say things, they admit they destroy evidence, and everybody can see how horrible they are. Yeah, definitely. And I know for a fact that those Australian Royal Commission hearings, they're still doing their job. I was just contacted the other day by a Jehovah's Witness couple that just woke up, and they came across the Australian Royal Commission hearings on YouTube. And they watched Jeffrey Jackson lie through his teeth. And yep. that helped wake them up. So it's still doing its job. Yep. It's good. And hopefully, yeah. like here in New Zealand, the Royal Commission, as a rule, is not really known nationally. There were so many people that did not know we had a Royal Commission going on. They yeah. never really advertised the fact that it was. And so the actual figures could be way, way, way higher than what has come forward. Yeah. We will never know because it just never happened. Yeah. Yeah. And we know a lot of the survivors don't want to file with the authorities or the statute of limitations has run out. Or they see what happens to victims on social media. They're attacked and everything yep. else. So they say, no, I just want to move on with my life and I don't want to, you know, talk about this. Absolutely. So, so you're I, right. I don't, it, the I, don't go bother is, looking. I don't go bother looking at the things that we've done in the media. I know what I've said is true. Yeah. 
um, if people are going to take offence, let them take offence. They're going to pick on me. Let them take. Let them pick on me. I'm not going to read it. Yeah. Because it's it's important that we educate New Zealand. I don't view really. While it is activism, I don't really view it as activism. I view it as an education as to what yeah. the J Dubs and other faith based are like. If people want to be involved with religion and they know all the ins and outs of it, then great. But you think about the baptism questions. When were you told in the baptism questions that if you make a mistake, you're going to get kicked out? Well, I changed that slightly now with the new things earlier this year with regards to young people being disfellowshipped. But... You never told. No. It's not transparent. No, no, and um, I think that's why they have a lot of problems. And we have heard that there are more changes coming. So we're going to see what new changes and thoughts and new light we're going to be hearing and seeing the rest of the year. So. Time will tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will. It will. Now, um, I wanted to ask you, your Facebook page, um, is it open to the public? Yep. Yeah. It's just J-Dubs for just Justice. I'll send you the link. Okay. Um, and I'll put the link down below. Yeah. And... Uh, I just wanted to mention, you know, I want to thank you and all of the others who are working in your network who try so hard to help the abuse survivors. And um, I know we don't always say it, but we appreciate all the hard work all of you have done. Yeah, I, when I first started doing it, my view on it was I'm no longer a J-Dub. They've got no control over me. I'm not going to sit on my hands anymore. I've got to start speaking out. I've got to educate where we can because it's extremely hard. Like here in New Zealand, our media landscape, like Australia is just finding with those sacking reporters, it's going to be hard to get stuff out there in the media. Radio New Zealand yeah. is the one that has been very, very, very helpful like I said, Anusha Bradley has done more to investigate the J-Dubs than the Commission. She's found out yeah. more of their policies than a lot of what has happened. Now, I'm not saying the lawyers in the Commission for the World Commission don't have a grasp on the J-Dubs because they have a grasp. Um, you know, like one of the I'll just get the picture. <laughs> that picture there. Oh, it's, okay. a court, it's a court scene. Uh -huh. And it says basically that any unfavorable decision they will appeal. Well, we sent that. That was in this publication here. Oh, okay. On page uh, 18. No, oh, it's not very good. Anyway, in paragraph, uh, chapter 20, 25, I appeal to Caesar. Okay. And we sent that to the um, lawyers. That was one of the things that we sent to them. And they had that picture in there, and they were expecting the appeals to happen. <laughs> um, but that's from their own publication. And they were surprised yeah. that that sort of thing was in their publication and that the J-Dubs would actually put it out there that that's what they were going to do. Yeah. yeah. So, it's amazing what is right in front of all of us our entire lives yeah. in the publications. And that's why we have all of these, you know, just like your library, so that we have the hard copies, so that when Jehovah's Witnesses tell us we're lying, we can show them right from the hard copy. Yeah, well, I... I I've been asked to do a couple of videos to, there's been a number of times people wanted me to prove to their witness family that um, 
J-Dubs never said that. So we showed them all the publication, put them under on the table, did the video, showed them who printed it, did it, did it, and they go, oh, it's all apostate. <laughs> they just don't believe their own publications. No, they don't. They don't. You can get a screenshot right from JW.org and they still will not believe it. I mean, it's exactly. just amazing, you know, how hoodwinked and their heads are buried in the sand. They do not want to see anything except the governing body. That's it. Yep. You can't pick on them. <laughs> You'll be in yeah. trouble. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if anything, so, I, I would only say that those ones who are out there doing the activism or education, um, a common goal needs to happen. I know we all have our own personalities. Um, like here in New Zealand, we've not had the problem of people coming forward and trying to fight against the common cause. We want to educate yeah. the commission. And whoever came on board had that same thinking. We were determined to put it out there. And while I did a lot of the speaking, um, just as a spokesman, um, there was people behind the scenes working hard at doing things. Yeah. Teamwork. So, that, yep, that's what we it's all what need it is. teamwork. Yep, that's what yeah. it is. And I like the word advocate. You know, that's more like what I call myself an advocate because I'm sticking up for the abuse survivors and protecting kids. So, you know, I like that word and whatever, you know, I don't like labels, but whatever labels someone wants to call themselves. But yeah, it would be great if everybody could work together and instead of you know, getting the ego in the way or, you know, fighting yeah. or trying to destroy someone because you don't like them. I mean, it would be so nice to get rid of all of that crap and just try to work together for a common theme. But unfortunately, you know, we know Watchtower's got some agents in the community and they're going to be fighting against everybody who's actually trying to get something done. We've seen it happen over and over again, and it's just a shame. It's just a shame. Yeah, no, it's, you're right, it is a shame. It's, I know we all have our own strengths and the things we like to do, but put them to good use. Become part of something yeah. that we can all work in and on to be able to reach the common goal, and that is educate, about Watchtower and exactly. all other and all other faith base are the same. So it, even if you carry on working not in the XJW community, you can do good by helping other communities out because you have similar things that have happened to you in your life. Exactly. Years ago, we were contacted by a Mormon guy and he thanked us for our videos and he said because of your videos you're showing us mormons and ex-mormons of the lds church how to become activists and speak out about what is happening in our church yeah. so that's one good thing that the xjw community has done is it has shown all these other faith-based organizations those apostates <laughs> of what needs to do be done and how to expose what's yeah. going on in their religion. Absolutely. Totally agree. Yeah, exactly. Well, Shane, I am sorry, but I have a major thunderstorm coming in, That's but right. I want to thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to um, join me here and, you know, let, letting all of us know what's going on in New Zealand. And uh, hopefully that final report will be out on time and it will be something that we can all use to expose what's going on 
within this Watchtower and this yeah, CSA problem. And then we'll see um, whether the JDubs will continue with their review on the um, report. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and of course they're not going to put any of this on JW.org. That would be good, but you're right, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think their but page would be full of all court cases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, can you hear me? Yep, can still hear you. Okay. All right. I'm going to say right. goodbye quick. Okay. Well, thank you, Shane, so much for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, Kim. Bye. See you later.